Now, um, I want to at least give a, a brief comment about social media and digital uh, digital assets. Your digital property might include your, meaning you young adult, um, your young adult child. It might include a number of different types of assets, like uh, say a digital music library, um, a photo saved on an internet uh, platform, credit card loyalty points, and even emails. Now, unfortunately, family members may fight over any type of asset, including the digital ones. And they might also not know how to access these materials. And that can generate major problems um, in trying, you know, trying the whole process of trying to get to those assets. And here's an interesting fact. According to a Pew Research uh, Center study, about a quarter of adults say that they are almost constantly online. Um, you all didn't see that, but yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> the study went further to show that approximately 77% of Americans go online daily. I know that you are a part of that 77%. Um, and several larger companies um, that people use or, you know, if they have a subscription service to a company, they've made it difficult for a third party to gain access to those accounts after the primary user has passed away after they've died. So if your college student, returning back to what we're talking about today, if your college student doesn't have a running record somewhere where they have a list of their digital assets, they need to set aside time um, sometime soon to do that. So at a minimum, they should be keeping a record of their online accounts. Um, what am I talking about? What are, where are you viewing me right now? Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, and then other accounts like Twitter, Amazon, Netflix, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, right? Email accounts associated with any of these uh, services. What are their usernames? What are their passwords? Are there password prompts, like secret questions? Um, now, if the particular digital service allows for what's called a legacy contact, like in case the worst happens, your college student should ensure that that information is updated. And if they want you to be that legacy contact, it needs to reflect that, right? Um, and each platform is going to have their own requirements. I, I don't have time to go into what every platform you know requires in this episode. Um, but suffice it to say that they each have their own requirements and it would be beneficial um, for your young adult to review them. Um, you know, and, you know, parents, chances are you have social media accounts, too. So this is a good opportunity for you to check and make sure that your legacy, you know, contacts are, are, are up to date. Um, Facebook, I just want to mention Facebook, for example, you know, has if, if a if a user passes away, if they die, Facebook um, will memorialize the account. And if a family member or close friend, um, oh, that's if they let Facebook know, right, that the person has died. In that case, Facebook is not going to provide the login information from what I understand, but it will, but it will add um, a remembering badge on the profile. So the constant, the content, hello, the content stays visible, but the profile won't appear in public places and it won't or shouldn't come up as one of those, you know, persons you may know on, uh, on Facebook and your stream. Now, nobody can log into a memorialized account, but if a person has chosen, if your young adult child has chosen that legacy contact I referred to before they die, the account can be changed. A legacy contact can also um, accept 
friend requests can pin a tribute, uh, a post, and can also change the, the profile picture if that's desired. My point in bringing all of this up and in referring to the, the Facebook example is that just to, to raise your awareness of this and discuss it with your college student, right, before, before they head off to college.